Good evening everyone. Good evening. Very good evening everyone. Good evening everyone. Welcome to Venkarna English Guru. Friends, if my voice is clear and you are able to listen to my voice, show me thumbs up so that we will continue our class. Come on friends, show me thumbs up so that I will continue my class. Yes. Quick friends. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Friends, Due to some other major important constraints, family constraints, you know, uh, these days I am not able to take classes for one hour, one and a half hour like. I am actually taking the class for just 30-40 minutes due to my two sons as they have been creating a lot of problems to my wife. Hence, I have uh, decreased my duration of taking class. It's not an issue and uh, from today onwards, I'm planning to upload one video every day in the morning at 7 or 8 o'clock. So to compensate my classes for uh, one hour or one and a half hour because some of the students are asking for more classes. So uh, to satisfy those students who are serious about writing the net examination on from October 6th to October 11th, this net examination. So to cater to those, the needs of those students, I'm planning to upload maybe some short videos. Maybe tomorrow I'm planning to release uh, one short video on Unit 8 Literary Criticism. Okay, you can watch it and enjoy some benefits. So if I am not able to take the class and as because taking classes uh, offline, I had the habit of taking for 8 hours, 10 hours, 15 hours continuously, but this is online. Even I have to uh, look for the data of some of the students. Okay, so that also I'm, I'm thinking of whether if I take the class for one hour, the data may be useful or may not be useful. I have also that notion. So I'm not able to continue the class for more than a hour, more than an hour or more than 45 minutes like that okay forget about it and you can also expect from today onwards every day morning and before eight o'clock you will have another video maybe short video some shortcut kind of technique as i uploaded today and one not today maybe i have uploaded a couple of videos how to prepare for something these videos are for you okay you can watch them enjoy so friends we are actually talking about neoclassical age and as a part of neoclassical age, before we go into the class, okay, not required to ask me. First, we'll focus on the class, okay? And we are actually in the middle of neoclassical period. The period from 1660 to 1798, this is called neoclassical. And this neoclassical rise into three sub periods 1660 to 1700. Restoration or Age of Dryden, 1700 to 1745, Age of Augustus, 1745 to 1798, which is considered to be Age of Sensibility. So we are actually talking about the major important period, Age of Augustus or the Augustus Age. Or you can say Age of Pope. This is also called the Age of Pope, 1700 to 17, 1744. This is the death of Alexander Pope. Hence, we can say the end of uh, age of Augustus and friends you can see what is the age of Augustus the original so friends as I as I've been talking about as a part of this uh, neoclassical period the classical age 
what is considered to be the age of Augustus according to classical literature? The period from 27 BC to 14 AD. The period from 27 BC to and 14 AD, this age according to classical literature where there were three important poets and Virgil okay, and Homer and Horace. Very popular poets who worked under the King Augustus during 27 BC to and 14 AD. This age is actually considered to be age of Augustus according to classical and that age is actually renamed the period from 1700 to 1745. This is according to neoclassical is considered to be the age of Augustus and this is the age of Virgil, Horace, Ovid. Ovid you know who composed and very popular po poems called Metamorphosis. Horace, the Arts Poetica, the popular book which influenced all the neoclassical writers and, and the theories of uh, poetry. Next, Roman Emperor Augustus. In England, applied from 700 to 1745. And this age, which is also called age of prose, the beginning of English novel. The rise of this period is all, this period is considered to be, the beginning of the 18th century is considered to be the rise of novel rise of English novel and where people spoke about and before 1700 people only spoke about literature meant only two things drama and poetry but from 1700 onwards from the beginning of 18th century literature meant not only poetry and drama but also novel short story essay and travelogue like plenty okay so age of prose rise of novel I can say I will also talk about rise of novel. What are the important novels that contributed during the neoclassical period for the spread of English novel for the first time? Mainly, as I told you, there are three. There were three important novels like Robertson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, Gulliver's Travels by John Adam Swift, and The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. These three are considered to be the pre-novel narratives, which helped the novelist that. Writing novels was also a popular genre at the time. And the leading writers, who are the popular writers of the time? Alexander Pope. Alexander Pope, very important, my friends. And after Shakespeare, and he was the, he was the second important writer who, who gave a number of quotations, a number of proverbs to, proverbs to the world. A thing of beauty, a not thing of beauty. A little learning is dangerous. So when you, to, and uh, that there were plenty of aspects. Next, and uh, uh, there are there are plenty of uh, important quotations that I cannot uh, recollect, but very popular for, and he is also popular for translating two important epics, Iliad and Odyssey, which were composed by Homer. He translated during 1714, 1718. And by translating these two, he became popular. And he was recognized. He was just like four and a half feet and and along with uh, Joseph Addison, who was six and a half, and both were rivals. Friends, I told you, this is the age of parodies and ironies, satires, means you can find two important rivals. And the most important pair of rivals, Joseph Addison and Alexander Pope. One writer writes to comment on the other. Next, another important, uh, two important rivals during this period were Samuel Richardson and Henry Fielding. Both wrote literature to ma to make comment on each other. Like so, wherever there are whenever there are parodies or pastiches or satires, there are two important rivals. So you can find mock epic, you can find satires, you can find iron ironical poems during this period. Jonathan Swift, a very popular important writer, and is known for pastoral and uh, an epistle to Dr. Arbut Nant and uh, uh, the Rip of the Lock, the popular mock epic composed by Alexander Pope. He is known for, and he is also known for employing heroic couplet. And he was the only writer and who uh, ordered all the other writers to follow certain style. If you are a neoclassical writer, if you are to be recognized as a neoclassical writer, you have to use the concept of neoclassic and the concept of heroic couplet. According to Alexander Pope, Alexander Pope he is actually called the Twickenham of 18th century. Very, very important. And it was asked a couple of times in the history of NTA. Next, Jonathan Swift, a satirist. And his guru, William Congreve, William Wichardley. And Jonathan Swift, he was actually a disciple of Jonathan Swift. Sorry, not Jonathan Swift. 
William Wycherley and William Congreve. Who were William Wycherley, William Congreve? The comedy of mannered dramatists. And they taught him the basics of the ABC of set writing style, writing ironical expressions. And he composed a number of essays, a number of novels like The Gulliver's Travels, a modern proposal like where he wrote political satires on the on that particular government which was available at the time. And Joseph Edison, Joseph Edison and is known for as a journalist, as a pamphleteer, as an essayist, a very popular writer and who started the Tatler and the Spectator for the first time in 1709 and 1711 respectively and deliberately imitated their literary forms. So when you talk about these writers and their deliberately literary forms and subjects, their emphasis on social concerns, we've been talking about art is not for art's sake, art is for humanity's sake. So a writer is there to correct the manners of the common people. Social concerns are the major subjects during this period. Social concerns and their ideals of moderation, decorum, urbanity, the process of involving sophisticated people, orthodox communities, the subject of writing literature during this period, during neoclassical, was all about urbanity, the styles, and was all about decorum following certain styles of writing literature. And if not, and that is that was not considered literature according to these experts. And a major representative of popular was the novelist and journalist, pamphleteer Daniel Defoe. A very, very important who composed two major important uh, novels that become example for uh, examples of uh, the picaresque novel, Robinson Crusoe and uh, Moll Flanders. Very popular novels composed by Daniel Defoe and in fact is considered to be the first writer who composed picaresque novels in English literature and it, it was not Thomas Nash. Next, Lady Mary Brockley Montagu. And this is only one name with four words. Simply, you can say Mary Montagu or Lady Mary Rotley Montagu. And she was the first letter writer. The process of writing letter. And in 20th century, there was a popular uh, women novelist like Evelyn Waugh. Evelyn Waugh. She was also a popular 20th century letter writer. And during this period, you, you could also find another important novelist who was so popular for writing novels in the form of letters. And he was Samuel Richardson. And the popular two important novels like Pamela and Clarissa are considered to be epistolary novels. Friends, these are some of the, some of the major important parts. Next, we'll go to next friends. During this period, there were two major important groups. This is very important for us. The Scribblers Club and the the, 19, the 1740s poets or the graveyard poetry or poets. Friends, you will get bits. Who of the following is not a part of the Scribblers Club? You need to remember all the writers. Who of the following is not a part of uh, the 1740s poetry or the graveyard poetry? So, friends, you know, we've been talking about a number of groups. And previously we spoke about uh, the Scottish Azurians, the Inverstivites the metaphysical poets, the cavalier poets, and the restoration dramatists. And now group number six, the scribless dramatists, sorry, the scribless satirists. All these are experts of satire. Okay. Next, see friends, scribless. Several times these bits, these bits were asked, who coined the word scribless? And scribless club was popular during this. Who is the leader of scribless club? Who of the following is not a part of Scribblers Club? Like there were plenty of bits, my friends, remember. So the group was founded in 1714 and ended after the death of Alexander Pope, 1744 and 45. Very, very important. And it was, a, it was an informal association of authors. Very, very important. It was a group, but which was informal. And based in London, it was actually founded in London and came together in the early 18th century. It included a number of satirists. This is just like a coffee shop. This is just like a coffee club where people, where these writers, uh, they gather together and they go on speaking about the current events of the 
politics, politics of the country or social changes of the country and urbanity of the country or decorum of the country. And this just, just like an informal club where they group together. And this included writers like Jonathan Swift and John Gay, Alexander Pope and John Arbuthnot and Henderson John and Thomas Parnell. Very, very important. And the two major important leaders, Alexander Pope and Jonathan Swift. Very, very important satirists and who went on making a number of satires on different writers. Okay, so these Jonathan Swift, Alexander Pope, John Gay, John Arbuthnot, Henry St. John, Thomas Parnell. Very, very important. Next friends, you can see, and Pope and Swift. Pope and Swift are the two members have the most long lasting influence because these are the major important satirists who composed a number of parodies, political parodies, political satires, religious satires, social satires. Okay, and most of their works, and one should look at the Rip of Lock, social satire, and Gilbert's Travels, political satire, like everything was a satire. And it was a, actually a comment on the government or the politics or the society. The group created a person of Martinus Scribblers. This is very important. They have created a character because this club speaks and it and as a part of this club, where these writers, they used to be a part of that, where they used to speak in the name of the character Martinus Scribblers through whose writings they accomplished their satirical aims. And they used to make comments for example, as a part of the Times of India, there used to be a caricature which was created by R.K. Lakshman. And the caricature was in the name, uh, through that caricature, which is titled The Common Man, where R.K. Lakshman used to make comment on the Indian politics. Okay, from 1950, 60, 70, 80s. And when he was working with the Times of India. In the same way, these writers, these satirists, they grouped together and they created a character, imaginary character, Martin Scribblers, and where through this character, where they criticized different uh, systems of the country at the time from 1914 to 45. And Robert Harley, the first Earl of Oxford and uh, Mortimer, occasionally joined the club, and he was also a part. Apart from, apart from uh, Jonathan Swift, Alexander Pope, John Arbuthnot, or Thomas Parnell, and he was also a part of this club, Robert Harley. The club began an effort to satirize the abuses of learning whenever they might be found, which led to the memoirs of Martinus Scriblers. So the memoirs of Martinus Scriblers, this is the text, collection of the satires that were written by this club members. The memoirs of Martinus Scriblers. Okay. Next, friends, you can see the second edition of Pope's Dentiad. The second edition of Pope's Dunciad also contains work attributed to Martinus Scribblers. The memoirs of Martinus Scribblers and the Dunciad also included the discussions of Martinus Scribblers. And Richard Owen Cambridge wrote a mock epic poem, the Scribblate, and where the hero Martinus Scribblers. So there was a parody which was written by this writer, Henry Fielding, and wrote the Welsh opera is presented as a tribute to Scribblians. So various writers they wrote as and to make comment or as a kind of tribute. Henry Fielding's pen name, and this is very important, my friends. Several times this bit was asked. What is the pen name of Henry Fielding and Scribblers Secundus? Very, very important. This is pen names. Lady of Christ. This is the pen name. This is the nickname or pen name of uh, John, John Milton and the Bard of Auburn, the next mystic poet. These are the two popular names that are associated with uh, William Shakespeare, like these pen names are very important. You can learn the Scribblers Secundus. This is the pen name of Henry Fielding, one of the popular important uh, novelists and critics and who wrote a number of parodies. Next friends, you can see, and uh, that was about and uh, the Scribblers Club. Now we are talking about another important group. This is, this is the graveyard poetry or the 1740s poets. I know that some of the students made a request to change the color, but I could not because of my technician is somewhat busy. And so uh, as he was busy, I could not change them. And if possible, I'll change in future. 
Next, the graveyard poetry. Very, very important. The graveyard poets or the 1740s poets, they are actually called. The 1740s poets, graveyard poets. First, what is, first you, you can have some idea. What does it mean by a graveyard? What could be the situation? And what could be the characteristics of graveyard? So graveyard, you know, a place where uh, different people after the death are buried. Yes or no? So, and what, what could be the setting? Gloomy, dull, okay, pensive and lamentating. Next, what could be the, what could be the idea of uh, graveyard? It, it might be the loss, death, okay, loss of human beings, death of human beings, loss of values like. So, graveyard poetry, which meant, and you need to get the idea, who are these poets? What did they write about? And what were the styles that were employed by these poets? You need to have some kind of clarity. That's it. It's all about graveyard poetry. And Thomas Chatterton. And based on Thomas, you have six names. Thomas Chatterton, Thomas Gray, Thomas Parnell, Thomas Percy, Thomas Wharton, and Thomas Joseph Wharton. So two names of Joseph Wharton and Thomas Wharton. And you can see six more names. Christopher Smart and William Collins. Edward Young, James McPherson, Robert Blair, and the major important writer, Thomas Gray. Remember, an LG written in the country churchyard. So these are the poets. First, let me show you something. Sorry. These are the poets who wrote literature, who wrote literature on, on the loss of human values loss of cultural values. Usually, elegies are written. I told you when I spoke about elegy and pastoral elegy in my previous video. What is elegy? What is pastoral elegy? Do you know elegies? And uh, dream allegories. Like there were plenty of elegies where I discussed terms like elegy, pastoral elegy, do you know elegies? Dream allegories, dirge, monody, trinity, epsidium. All these are connected with death. I spoke about in a lengthy class. Maybe I took for more than one hour. So if you require, you can watch them. So this graveyard poetry, graveyard poems are one type of poems. But these are not on the death of human beings. These are not on the death of our beloved. No. These are the poems which were written by these writers to talk about loss. Loss. Lamentation of values. Culture, these values can be moral values, cultural values, religious values, social values. So these are the poets. They wrote a lot of elegies, but not on the death. Not on the death of human beings, but on the death of values. Death of cultural values. Death of social values. This is the only difference. And the remaining. And elegy, that is always pensive, dull and lamentative. Again, graveyard poetry is also lamentative and dull, pensive and happy. And the story usually takes place in a graveyard or burial ground. And there will be a procession in elegy, pastoral elegy. In the same way, graveyard poetry is also uh, talks about the procession of a loss of values, loss of cultural values, loss of moral values in a country, in a state, in a hamlet, like that they talk about. And one of the major important writers and the poets was Thomas Gray. And the best example, an elegy written in the country churchyard. Okay, the best poem that becomes a popular example for this. Next friends, I hope you remember this. And I know that you've been constantly supporting and, and sharing our videos to your friends and colleagues who are in a great need. Don't think that this is not for, I want my classes are to be useful to everybody. Don't have any narrow-mindedness. If I share this, somebody may become a competitor for me as a part of my jail or DL. Don't think like that because net all India level, you have competition. And the kind of stuff that you, that you, that you promote, that only will make you stand on the, on, and you can stand on the list of uh, qualified candidates. That's what, and you share, and have a lot of discussions about that. Next, what are the important dates with regard to this? So first one, 27 BC, 14 AD, the Roman Emperor Augustus age. 700, beginning of age of Augustus. 1709, the tackler, this is very important. Richard Steele, 
who started the first English magazine. Friends, I told you the Anglo-Saxon, which is the popular first magazine, first chronicle started by King Alfred the Great. Afterwards, the first chronicle, the Tatler. And it appeared from 1709 to 1711. How many days? Three days a week. Friends, during my during my uh, graduation, and I used, I learned communicative skills or spoken English in Hyderabad, where there was there is a popular center in Hyderabad like uh, R K Mat or Ramakrishna Mat, where uh, and they usually provide communicative English classes in two sessions, TTS MWF. So TTS that was my batch where I learned communicative skills in three. So what is the relationship between TTS and this? TTS. This magazine also appeared weekly three days, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Same thing that I learned my communicative skills and Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday where during my graduation at BGR Government Degree College. So magazine, just remember who started the Tatler? Richard Steele. Richard Steele is a popular writer who invented a concept of the sentimental comedy, remember. I told you what is sentimental comedy and examples. And 1709 Pastorals, the first poem that is composed by Alexander Pope. And this is very important. An essay on criticism. An essay on criticism. This is a popular poem, not essay. Friends, you see, in the history of net set JLDL examination, there was a bit. An essay on criticism by Alexander Pope is actually is. Or is a or an a poem or a novel, a short story or a drama. It is an example for a poem. Remember, but people thought that, people usually think that an essay, this might be an essay. No, this is actually a poem in the form of epistles. Epistle letter. A letter. And this poem is actually composed in four important letters. How many letters are there? This is very important. This was also asked in the history of net. Next, friends, you can see, and 1711 magazine, another important magazine. 1711 magazine, The Spectators, started by Richard Steele, continued by Joseph Addison. This is very important. The Spectators, the character, the Dr. Primrose, created by Joseph Addison in this. So, Dr. Primrose is a character created by Dash. Several times this bit was asked, and uh, Joseph Addison, Dr. Primrose becomes a part of Dash magazine the spectator next if you get any confused the tatler spectator ts you can think about it tatler spectator first tatler was started next is spectator so get some idea next if you are confused 1712 the rape of the lock by alexander pope the rape of the lock it is actually after mcflick no this is considered to be the second important mock epic in english literature what is mock epic what is epic i told you my friends okay don't have any uh, doubts this is actually a satire on the sophisticated orthodox commun communities and i will i will speak about alexander pope in the next class don't worry next this is actually a comment on the sophisticated orthodox and families of 18th century where they give priority for objects, not to the human beings. Robinson Crusoe, 1712. It's a popular picaresque novel composed by Daniel Defoe. And this is an allegorical novel, picaresque novel. It's an allegory describing something under the guise of something else is nothing but allegory. So allegory is nothing but parable, fable. It's a fable story. It's a fable novel. Next, friends, you can see. 1714, the Scribblers Club was founded, started, Scribblers Club. 1714, the Rape of the Lock was by Alexander Pope in five cantos. This is very important. How canto, sections. So how many sections are there in the, in the mock epic that is composed by Alexander Pope, the Rape of the Lock? When it was first published, two cantos. As a whole, at the end, finally, five cantos. Remember this, this is very important. The Beggar's Opera by John Gay. The edition of Shakespeare, very, very important. After first full edition, second full edition, third full edition, and after on Shakespeare, to Shakespeare. And this is the another important text that was composed on the works of Shakespeare. The edition of Shakespeare, which was written by Alexander Pope. 1726, The Gulliver's Travels. 
the gulliver's travels the gulliver's travels and this is another important picaresque novel that is composed by jonathan swift this is a political satire and this political satire includes four important volumes four sections four parts and the major character the protagonist gulliver he travels through four important voyages four important voyages what are they what is the first one last one what is the correct order like that you will get bits in the history of net as a part of your nta set net examination so how many volumes are there for how many volumes for how many sections for what is the first section last section third section if you get bit you can remember this code lblh lblh i kept this code to remember in my own context like in lal bahadur stadium there was a ladies hostel okay lal bahadur stadium lb stadium ladies hostel so what is the first one voice to lilliputians voice to brodingnacks voice to laputans voice to humanims voice to humanims voice to laputans voice to brodingnacks voice to lilliputians several times this bit was asked my friends what is the how many parts are there what is the correct chronological order of the parts the sections of gulliver's travels remember lblh next this is a political satire this is a social satire this is actually a satire on the english politics two political parties were established at the time tories and whigs it is actually a comment on them 1730 an epistle to dr arbuth not this is the autobiographical poem by alexander pope friends so far we discussed only two autobiographical poems one the grace abounding by john bunyan and the second one an epistle to dr arbuth not by alexander pope that's it only you you could find two autobiographical poems or nob one is autobiographical poem another one is autobiographical novel only till neo classical period we had only one or two not more than that autobiographies next you can see 1733 an essay on man an essay on man this is written by alexander pope this is also a poem composed in three epistles epistle it refers to a poem that is composed in three epistles 1740 the nobel pamella very very important the nobel pamella pamella and clarissa two popular novels composed by samuel richardson and what is the greatness of samuel richardson he composed novels in the form of uh, letters so his novels are psychological novels epistolary novels i told you what are psychological what are epistolary in my previous videos and the subtitle a novel without a hero the subtitle of pamella and to me comment on samuel richardson henry fielding wrote another novel that is shamella so this type of works we can say parodies remember parody a vision of judgment the vision of judgment pamella shamella which means this novel is written by samuel richardson directly or indirectly there was a comment on henry fielding and it was read by henry fielding and he thought and uh, that fellow samuel richardson wrote novel to make comment on me and why should i and he wrote a novel to make comment on samuel richardson the title is shamella that's what the these types of works so one writer writes to make comment on the other the other writer writes on somebody to make comment on the other this type of uh, poems or plays or novels which you can say parody technically critically critical criticism you can say pastiche so parody or pastiche both are same so a kind of imitation but this imitation goes on making pulling the leg of the other writer next this is a parody on pamela next this is not 1740 1748 okay and clarissa this is another novel composed by samuel richardson and the subtitle love and money 1744 death of alexander pope and 1745 end of age of augustus this is what i thought of talking about and with regard to neo classical period my friends and this is all about uh, age of augustus so far we have covered two important periods and we talk about the third period age of sensibility next i will definitely talk about six important writers like john dryden mainly first important writer john milton 
first I'll once I finish age of sensibility once I complete that I will talk about few writers mainly John Milton in detail okay maybe version one so John Milton next John Dryden Alexander Pope Jonathan Swift Oliver Goldsmith and William Blake the six writers I'll be covering once I finish age of sensibility okay friends and before you leave like our video share our video to your friends and we'll be meeting and uh, tomorrow same time right guys a very good evening everyone not an issue if i do not say and before you leave like our video and uh, share our video to your friends